In this video, I'm going to look at how to answer a question about initial rates, calculating rate constants, coming up with a two-step mechanism for reaction, and then moving on to an Arrhenius plot where we're going to calculate the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor. So I've put the link to the question in the description for the video, so just click on that, have a go at the question, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so to work out the rate constant first, we've got to work out the orders of reaction for the two reactants. So what we can do here, can't always do this, but it's quite nice this one. We can keep both constant for different experiments and uh, calculate the effect that the other one's change in concentration is having on the rate. So you can see experiments one and two, the iodide concentration is kept at three times 10 to the minus two. The Fe3 plus concentration has doubled and the rate has also doubled. So that's first order with respect to Fe3 plus. So you don't need to write war and peace, you literally just write down what I've done there. Experiments one and two, Fe3 plus concentration times two, rate times two, first order for Fe3 plus. And then to get the order with respect to I minus, if we use experiments one and three, you can see the Fe3 plus concentration is kept at four times 10 to the minus two, so the I minus concentration has doubled and the initial rate has actually gone up four times. So that's second order for the I minus. So they've written that in a similar way to the first one. So now we've got the orders, we can write the rate equation, which looks like that. We rearrange to get K as the subject of the equation and then we're just going to insert the results for, I'm going to use experiment one. It doesn't matter which experiment you use because these were all carried out at the same temperature, so it will give the same value for K. So there's the numerical value for the rate constant, and now we're going to do the units. It doesn't actually tell you to work out the units, but it expects you to, so always do that. So all I've done there is put the units of rate on the top, because that's what's happening there, and we've got a unit moles per decimeter cubed for the Fe3+, plus. and because this is second order, we've got moles per decimeter cubed squared. And then if you write it this way, it's quite easy to see what's going to cancel. And then these need to go up to the top. So moles times moles on the bottom is moles squared. So it's moles to the minus 2. dm to the minus 3 times dm to the minus 3 is dm to the minus 6 on the bottom, which is to the plus 6 on the top. Seconds to the minus 1 were already on the top, so they stay as they are. Conventionally, you're meant to put your positive powers first. That's why I've written dm6 first before mol minus 2. But if you've put them the other way around, that's fine. Okay, so if we move on to the next part of the question, where we've got to come up with the two-step mechanism that's consistent with the results. Uh, I've got the rate equation just written down again, and the overall reaction. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the reactants for the rate determinant step. That's all linked to the rate equation. So we've got one mole of Fe3+, plus, and two, because it's second order, uh, moles of I minus. So Fe3 plus plus 2I minus. And then I would look at the products of the reaction and ask myself, can I make any of those products? Yeah, I can make. I'm going to go down the iodine route. There's lots of ways you can do this, by the way. So um, you might have done it slightly differently. I'll just explain the checks that you do at the end to make sure it's OK. So I've made an I2. So to get this to balance, I obviously need Fe. But we've got to be careful with the charge now. So at the moment, I've got on the left, 3 plus 2 minus, so 1 plus charge on the left. I've got no charge on the right, so that needs to be an Fe plus. So the next thing I need to do is um, get rid of that Fe plus because it's not actually in the overall equation. So if I make it a reactant of the other step, it's going to cancel when I add them together. You can see that we've got the two I minuses we need but we've only got one Fe3 plus at the moment. So if I react the Fe plus with an Fe3 plus, that's going to give me two Fe3 pluses when I combine. And then in terms of products, well, that's just going to give me what I need, Fe2 plus. Charges work. One plus three plus is four plus. Two times two plus is four plus. So that works. The mechanism is consistent with the evidence because the reactants in the rate determinant step are the sort of reagents and the factoring in the orders in the rate determinant step. And when you add the two steps together, 
you get the overall equation. And remember, the Fe pluses will cancel. So we've got 2Fe3 plus plus 2I minus gives I2 and 2Fe2 plus. So moving on to the Arrhenius graph now, first thing we've got to do is draw a line of best fit. So I'll just do that now. So there's my line of best fit there. So obviously there's going to be slight variation on how you decide where the line of best fit should be. So there's always a range allowed for the exam. So don't worry too much about that. As long as you've drawn a decent line of best fit, you'll be fine. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is work out the gradient. So I need to work out the change in Y over the change in X. So for my change in Y, I've gone from 30.5 to 28. And my change in X, I'm going from 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So if I do that divided by that, I'm going to get my gradient. So you can see that's coming out at 806 using my numbers. The range allowed in the exam was 800 to 1040. So hopefully you're within that range. You can see I've put a minus sign in brackets there. So technically that gradient is negative because the slope's downwards. But the numbers, the way the numbers are working, you're not actually going to get a negative sign there. So to get the activation energy, we need to use the natural log form of the Arrhenius equation, which is on the data sheet. It's written like that. If you've watched my video on uh, when I explain or teach the Arrhenius equation, um, I sort of put it in that form as well because I think... Putting it that way, you can actually see the y, m, x plus c more clearly. And then that m term there, the minus e over r, that's your gradient. So we're going to solve now to calculate Ea, activation energy. So that minus 806 gradient is equal to minus Ea over r. You can see I've just cancelled out the minus sign straight away. So I'm going to take r on the other side, multiply it by that 806. So... 806 multiplied by R, which is 8.314, equals our activation energy. And it wants the answer uh, in joules per mole, and they're the units that it will come out in for the Arrhenius equation, and we need to give it the three significant figures. So my calculator value is coming out at 6701.084. So the three significant figures, I would need to write 6700. And then the last thing we need to do is use the graph to calculate the value for the pre-exponential factor A. So if we go back to the equation, y equals mx plus c, there's your c term, that's your y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the lin of A. So using my graph, I would need to say that the lin of A is 31.12335. So I'm getting a y-intercept of 31. 5. So that's the lin of A. So then to work out what A is, I need to do the inverse of that, which is, so A equals E to the 31.35. So that's given me an answer to three significant figures. I'm going to go again of 4.12 times 10 to the 13.